Fact is key to your understanding of fair value gaps. So let's begin with reminding ourselves what a fair value gap is. Here, if we take this example, right? Look at the three last candles. We have this bearish candle and these two bullish candles. Your fair value gap starts at the high of the first candle and then it ends at the low of the third candle, which is your last candle. So the gap between the high of the first candle and the low of the last candle gives you your fair value gap. In this instance, this is your buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. This is where you had an excess in buyers, so price will have to come down eventually at one point in time to rebalance this excess in buyers to provide fair value because the market always has to move in fair value price action before it continues higher and seeks liquidity. And that is your two functions in price. Rebalance old inefficiencies, in this instance, but you're busy, buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, and then seek liquidity. And then the process just keeps repeating. The reason price moves like that is to facilitate market transactions and provide fair value because the optimal place for price to be is in equilibrium, hence why it rebalances old inefficiencies. So now that you know the basic idea behind the fair value gap and how it is formed, let's look at the different ways you could utilize fair value gaps within your trading. Now, because you know that when there is a fair value gap that forms, in this instance, your buy side imbalance sells side inefficiency, meaning there's an excess in market buyers. Ideally, when you are trading one side of the market, you want to see the fair value gap back up that side of the market. So for example here, let's assume that in this entire leg, right, we are bullish. Because we are bullish, we want to see buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiencies. Because if there is an excess in buyers, then that clearly means that that shows you displacement, which heavily indicates price is going to continue going higher. Hence why you want to see it in direction with your overall bias. So here in this small leg, you had bullish fair value gaps. In the process of creating these fair value gaps, look at how price comes back, retraces them fair value gaps to provide balanced price action before it continues higher giving you more fair value gaps. Look at the size of these bullish candles in comparison to these bearish candles that retraces to rebalance these old fair value gaps. It's significantly larger, right? And as well as being significantly larger, it creates fair value gaps. There's an excess in bias here. The price will have to come back to to balance out the excess in bias before it continues higher. So it's a very basic and easy understanding. If there are excess buyers, price is likely going to go higher. If there are excess sellers, price is likely going to go lower. It's as simple as that. Another thing you guys should be aware of is consequent encroachment. So here, we have this sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, right? The gap between the first candle's low and the last candle's high. This is where you would mark out your fair value gap, also known as your CIVI. Your consequent encroachment is at the 50% level of this fair value gap. Why the 50% level? Because at this level, Price is extremely sensitive. So ideally, what you want to see at this level, if this fair value gap was to be respected, is for price to not have a full body closure past the 50% level. If it does have a full body closure past the 50% level, it is likely that this fair value gap is going to be invalidated. And when I say invalidated, I mean a full body closure past the entire fair value gap. Because I'm sure you guys are aware by now, price is very dynamic. So even though price has a full body closure past this 50% level, a lot of times, it doesn't completely disrespect this fair value gap. Hence why this fair value gap is still validated, even though it closes past the consequent encroachment. But it's just an ideal scenario that you don't want to see price have a full body closure past this consequent encroachment, because it's very likely that price will have a full disrespect of this fair value gap if it does so. So that is your consequent encroachment. It is the halfway point or the 50% level of your fair value gap. Ideally, you want to see wick closures above it or price to not come to it at all if it was to respect this fair value gap, right? So if we play price up, notice how price comes up and then it closes just below the 50% level. And because it does so, price continues lower. And then it takes out this overall draw on liquidity. If you look here, this is an example of what I was talking about, of how price is still valid, even though it has a full body closure past the 50% level. So here, you have your fair value gap. Playing price up. Look at how this candle had a full body closure past the consequent encroachment and disrespects this fair value gap even further by wicking above it. However, look at where the bodies are. They were still within the fair value gap. So even though we had this full body closure past the 50% level and a wick above the fair value gap, this does not invalidate the fair value gap because price 
the bodies still respected within the fair value gap. If the body had a full closure, if it had a full body closure, instead of this wick above the imbalance, then that would invalidate this fair value gap. And as you can see, it continues to go lower. Again, more examples are shown here. You have your fair value gap. Mark out your consequent encroachment. The wicks, this is a very ideal scenario. There are no body closures past this consequent encroachment. Even here. You have a very small fair value gap here. Drawing out consequent encroachment. Same thing. There are no body closures past the 50% level of the fair value gap. So you can anticipate the fair value gap being respected and price to continue lower. The last thing I want to show you guys is what happens when a fair value gap gets disrespected. Pretend this is your higher time frame discount array and price is bullish. This is your higher time frame direction. And here, this is your lower time frame. So on a high time frame, we are bullish. Price comes into a high time frame discount array. As you would expect, discount arrays, you will want to see stay respected and premium arrays get disrespected, right? Because price is bullish. So when we come into discount array, we would anticipate for this discount array to be respected. And because we would anticipate for this discount array to be respected, we would jump down onto a lower time frame and look for indications that the bearish trend on the lower time frame is going to reverse from here off of this higher time frame discount array. And this is where your imbalances and fair value gaps comes into play for your first indication of a reversal. Usually you will look for a market structure break, but a lot of the times there is an even earlier indication that price is going to reverse. And this is where you have, a lot of times you will have an imbalance or fair value gap here. And then price will completely invalidate this bearish fair value gap or imbalance with a full body closure past the fair value gap, backed up with displacement. So when you get a full body closure past an opposing fair value gap with displacement off of a higher time frame PD array, this is where you could anticipate that price is likely going to reverse from here without even needing your market structural break. You don't have to wait for that. So now let's look at how you could put them all together, focusing on just fair value gaps and imbalances. So here on a daily, which is my higher time frame, it's very clear that we are in a bullish uptrend. Discount arrays are being respected, premium arrays are being disrespected. If we go to the most recent price action here, what do you have here? You have an imbalance. There is an excess in buyers here as opposed to sellers. So price will have to come back to this imbalance at one point in time to balance out the excess buyers with sellers. Now, this is where you could draw out your consequent encroachment after price had rebalanced this old imbalance, right? Look at how when price rebalanced this old imbalance, it didn't have a full body closure past this consequent encroachment, which is your very ideal scenario in anticipating whether this imbalance is going to stay validated or invalidated. So now that price has come back down to rebalance this old imbalance and having a body closure past this consequent encroachment, let's go down onto the hourly and look for a disrespect of the opposing imbalance or fair value gap. Because remember, that would be your first early indication that price is going to reverse on the lower time frame to align with your higher time frame direction. You need three things. A higher time frame PD array, in this instance, a discount array, because we are bullish on the higher time frame. You need to see displacement and a disrespect of the opposing imbalance or fair value gap. You can see here that already, straight off the bat, when price came into this consequent encroachment, we had this imbalance that was left behind. If you use the consequent encroachment again, this candle had a full body closure past its consequent encroachment. So this is a very early indicator for the opposing imbalance to be invalidated completely, right? And as I'm sure you're aware, playing price out, it completely invalidates this opposing imbalance. Not only that, but it shows you signs of displacement as well as here, a volume imbalance is created, showing you that price impulsively wants to go higher. So now we play price out. Price comes back to this volume imbalance after disrespecting this opposing imbalance with a full body closure and displacement, indicating that price is going to reverse from here. That is your first sign, right? So when you had that first sign, price came back to this volume imbalance and then it gives you heavier displacement taking out this high, which gives you your market structure shift. So after you get that market structure shift, that is extra confirmation for price reversing and realigning with your higher time frame bullish direction 
after you had your first indication with the disrespect of this opposing imbalance. Even before we had a market structure shift or market structure break, we had already anticipated for price to continue higher because of a disrespect of an opposing imbalance or fair value gap. And now as you would expect, this is where you can have your entries. Here, imbalance. Draw that out. Look at how it respects the consequent encroachment. This is where you can have your entries at a close of that fair value gap and then your stop loss just below this overall low. If you wanted to get a higher risk to reward ratio, you could draw your consequent encroachment and then enter off of the 50% level. Because like I said, the 50% level of a fair value gap, in this instance, a BISI, is where price is extremely sensitive to. Taps you in. What would your target be? Let's go down to daily. This would be your overall target. Because remember, at the start of this video, I said the two functions in price is to rebalance old inefficiencies and seek liquidity. Because we are bullish, price rebalance this old inefficiency so what would you anticipate next? To seek liquidity. Where is your liquidity? This swing high. So this would be your overall target. All right, let's go back down onto the hourly. And let's see if it takes us all the way to this overall drawn liquidity, which it should, because it's in line with our high time frame bullish direction. And we had already rebalanced an old inefficiency. If you're not comfortable with holding it all the way to that overall drawn liquidity, this is where you could find immediate draws on liquidities to collapse your entire, to either collapse your entire positions or take partials along the way. Here is one draw. This is another draw, as well as these original consolidation. At these levels, you could either take partials or collapse your entire positions. Here, here, and then eventually, you would anticipate for price to take out this overall drawn liquidity. Even though you have a high time frame drawn liquidity, you don't always have to hold it all the way and collapse your entire position at this overall draw on liquidity. A lot of times, it's better for your psychology and also more comfortable for the majority of you to collapse your positions at the immediate draws on liquidity or at least take partials to have a peace of mind. And this higher time frame drawing liquidity is simply just there to help us frame our high time frame narrative. Because once we framed our high time frame na narrative, going down and having your entries becomes very easy because you know where the high time frame is likely going to head, which is this higher time frame drawing liquidity. So let's play price out and see what it does. Look at that. This is exactly what we want to see. A very large bullish candle leaving behind an extremely large imbalance. It shows you aggressive buyers are heavily in control of this current market. Price comes down. Look at this. Price comes down, rebalances that imbalance, seeks liquidity. In the process of retracing to this imbalance, it engineers more buys and liquidity to seek. So you guys shouldn't be scared of retracements because sometimes when you have a large bearish candle here in the form of your retracement, it becomes very daunting. But you have to remember, if you have your higher time frame narrative in play, which is bullish, any bearish movement on the lower time frame is to simply engineer more liquidity. It's very unlikely that when you have bearish price action on the lower time frame, it is going to be a reversal because it's not in line with your higher time frame. Your higher time frame is the backbone to your entire trading. Don't get caught up in the lower time frame if you don't have any context of the higher time frame. So here, of the price retrace to this imbalance and seek liquidity, that gave you the final push to your overall draw on liquidity, which is your higher time frame draw on liquidity. And just like that, you get nearly five risk to reward ratio. All right, so this is a very solid trade. So that concludes the basic steps required to mastering the fair value gaps. There will be more detailed videos covering fair value gaps in the future but if you guys have any questions or suggestions for future videos please leave them below in the comments if you found this video helpful please like and subscribe and like always take care and i'll see you guys in the next one